Welcome back to the Educational AD Podcast. We'll get right back with today's guest. But first, we want to give a shout out to our two new partners, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. That's Jen Brooks's great organization. Go to globalcommunityofwomeninsports.org and see all the great resources that are available to you. They'll promote uh, women's uh, women in sports. Uh, we also have partnered with We Coach. Uh, that's Vanessa Fuchs. She's a CEO, a uh, great organization. More has more been focused on college, but now reaching out into high school. Uh, they're trying to move the numbers and help more women get involved with coaching. Go to WeCoachSports.org. That's WeCoachSports.org. And again, see all the resources available to you as an AD and as a coach. So thanks again to our partners, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports, and We Coach. Check them out. And now let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive. Their indoor scoring tables and video boards not only generate revenue for your department, but also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sidelineinteractive.com or email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and check out their indoor scoring tables and video boards. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. If you're looking for a very cool way to recognize the school records for all your sports, for all the events, go to sidelineinteractive.com. Uh, excuse me, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Uh, they've got a, a wide selection of touchscreen consoles and an entire library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let Vital Signs Wall of Fame help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. Once again, that website is vitalsignswalloffame.com, or you can email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. Vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Athletic surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the 95% of the players and parents who really love your program and helps demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Go to athleticsurveys.com and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to thank the good folks at SnapRaise. Go to snapraise.com and see how their fundraising platform can help you escape the fundraising headaches of the past. Our coaches use SnapRaise and it's just fantastic. As an AD, I know what's going on, but I don't have to be involved. Choosing the best fundraiser for you and your group is critical, and you can put the SnapRaise digital fundraising difference to work at your school. It's easy, it's safe, and like I said, it works. Go to SnapRaise.com and check out the thousands and thousands of dollars that they have helped programs just like yours raise using their platform. Grow your program with SnapRaise and start a fundraiser that works for you. That's snapraise.com. We also want to thank the good folks at Huddle. Remember, Huddle is how the world sees sports. Over 200,000 teams in 40 sports use Huddle to help their athletes perform better using video and analytics. Huddle's a, the platform available for high school, for college, for youth teams, even the pros are using Huddle. Um, Huddle can help teams using analytics, um, using uh, smart cameras. There's even online and uh, mobile apps. It's a complete solution for professional quality 
video and analytics. Okay. As a football coach, I used huddle for years. And as a school, we were a huddle school. Our coaches just loved it. Go to huddle.com and see why millions trust huddle to maximize the potential of their teams. That's huddle.com. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and see how athletic departments are creating world-class marketing content for their school's social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device and you don't need any design experience. It's so easy, even I can do it. Go to gipper.com, mention the uh, code ADPOD10, that's A-D-P-O-D-1-0, and get 10% off just for mentioning the podcast. That's it. Again, Gipper.com. Start creating custom branded content for your school's social media channels. Gipper.com. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms, the industry leader in registration and forms. But there's so much more than that. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. They've got reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with athletics. Final Forms can also help your coaches with things like attendance and communication and even help with their certification management. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And your data is secure with Final Forms. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. And we want to thank our friends at Hometown Ticketing. Go to hometownticketing.com and they'll show you how to sell your tickets online. <clears throat> they'll show you how to scan the attendees that come to your games. They'll also tell you how to uh, collect your revenue. And every step of the way, you'll have a dedicated client success manager just for you, providing hands-on support. That's hometownticketing.com. They'll also show you how you can use online ticketing to collect revenue for things like school dances and theater performances, uh, music concerts, uh, you name it, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and start selling your tickets online. That's hometownticketing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We're going back to Delaware, and our guest today is Joe Thompson. Joe is a certified Master Athletic Administrator. He's the Assistant AD at Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. Very active at the state level. We'll hear more about that later. But Joe Thompson, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate being here and having the opportunity. Uh, well, we were just talking. Uh, you guys just started uh, school for our uh, listeners. We're recording this on September 8th, so it's that time of year. Uh, obviously, you're very busy. Let's go ahead and get started. Sure. Uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us the Joe Thompson story in about four minutes. Uh, take us up through the college years, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back and hear more about your uh, career. So, uh What's the Joe Thompson origin story? <laughs> well, I uh, played ball in high school. I had an opportunity to play at a Division three level at the Sales University in um, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Always loved playing the game. I was really fortunate to have a lot of good coaches in my life that really were great role models to me. I would say probably the most influential one was my father and then also my high school basketball coach. Uh, they both coached kids, and I saw the impact they made. When I went to college, I knew I wanted to be in education and wanted to coach. Uh, and again, had the opportunity to play in college and play for a great man in college, um, Jack Sabota, and graduated and had the opportunity at that point to get into coaching. So my, my college career uh, really was great in that, yeah, it was great to play, but I also learned a lot about the game of coaching itself. And uh, had no idea about being an athletic director, just graduated with a degree in psychology uh, became a teacher and then a guidance counselor and then had an opportunity to get into high school coaching right after I graduated. 
you know, talk about those days. Uh, let's jump back into, uh, you know, high school. Uh, you know, talk about some of those uh, experiences that maybe not at the moment, but as you look back, maybe they were touchstone experiences that, uh, you know, drew, drove you or pushed you toward becoming an AD? <laughs> I would say uh, one of the one of the things that really drove me from my high school years, especially was I always loved playing the game, but I was, I also was not that tall. I actually grew three inches between my junior year or my senior year and my freshman year of college. Actually, when I went to college, they didn't recognize me. Um, and I was always told that I was probably too small and I was going to make that up with my heart and my hard work and my determination. Um, that's something that has really stayed with me and that, that's something I'm very conscious of when I'm working with athletes, you know, and especially if an athlete comes to me and they feel that they're just, you know, they're, they're a little bit overwhelmed physically. Um, I learned at a very early age that mentally, if I attack things and approach things that, you know, things could be successful. Um, I would say that's one of the, one of the things that I, I took from that. The other thing was, which was very interesting was when I was in high school, I was at a predominantly white high school. And uh, one of the players that came in who actually became a good friend of mine and almost like a brother to, to me, I was older brother, Michael Thomas, broke the color barrier at our school. And I firsthand saw how that was an issue in the state way back then. Now, I graduated quite a while ago. Um, I graduated from high school in uh, 1971. But, you know, back then it was very uncommon uh, for that to be the case. And I spent a lot of games, a lot of time, uh, really understanding how tough it was for him to make that transition. Um, and that's another lesson that has always stayed with me. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough now, I still get to co coach high school basketball. And whenever I get the chance, I take the opportunity to let my students know just how much things have changed from those earlier days, as you know, as well. And, uh, I think they were two of the biggest things that I learned um, from my high school experience. Wow. That's a, uh, you know, pretty powerful experience. And again, you know, you don't know it as it's happening, but you right. can look back and say, wow, that, you know, that really helped shape who I am and how I work with kids. So very important mm -hmm. for our listeners. Our guest today is Joe Thompson. He's a certified master athletic administrator. He's one of the few podcast guests. that's actually uh, a couple of years older than me. Uh, <laughs> More, more seasoned, we'll say. Uh, and he's the assistant AD and the basketball coach at Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive for their support of the podcast. Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards not just uh, generate money for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student-athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're visiting today with Joe Thompson, Certified Master Athletic Administrator, He's at the Wilmington Friends School in Delaware. Joe, uh, take us back uh, maybe through those early years of teaching and coaching. And at that point that you decided to come to the other side of the desk and become an athletic director, how did that all play out? Well, it's, it's been an interesting journey for me, Jake. I will tell you that again, if anybody had asked me uh, if I was going to be doing that job, I, I would not have known. I didn't really understand it. Um, but I really have kind of taken an interesting journey to get to where I am now. Um, when I graduated from college, I knew I wanted to coach and I knew um, I loved the game of basketball. I had an, opp I had an opportunity. My uh, high school coach um, actually hired me on to be an assistant with him while I was student teaching, uh, Lou Bender. Uh, he coached me at Slazy Adam High School in Delaware. And I helped Lou for a year. Um, but at that time, there was no teaching job there. However, a neighboring school, which interestingly enough, was our arch rival when I was at Slazy Adam, St. Mark's, their head coach called me and asked me if I'd be interested in coming over and being an assistant coach there, which was kind of interesting. I went home and said to my dad, wow, St. Mark's just called and they're interested in interviewing me for a job, but I can't go there. They're our arch rival. I mean, that's, you know, that, 
And my father's words of advice were, well, they offered you a job and your other one hasn't yet. So you might want to go interview. And uh, I went to St. Mark's and I coached there for seven years. Um, I enjoyed the experience. Tom Rosa, who is one of the more um, knowledgeable ADs in the state of Delaware, was my boss as the head coach. And then when Tom got the opportunity to become the athletic director, I stepped up to be the head basketball coach and worked closely with Tom. But that's where I kind of took a side turn. Um, I promised my wife that when we started our family, um, that I wanted her to be at home with the kids. And uh, she promptly uh, let me know after our first son, uh, we had opportunity, our first son, Jay, was born. And um, I knew I had to start thinking about something alternative wise. And I was working on my MBA at the time as well. Um, we were excited and, and I got excited back on into my next year. But my wife also let me know that she was expecting again. And I had made this promise. And I said, OK, you know, I'll hold to my promise. And I had just completed my MBA and I entered the business world. So I left education and coaching, which as you know, and we all know, you never get tired of, you never get out of that business. And if you love it, you love it. Um, but I got out of the education world and I was in the business world for 25 years. And uh, I'd like to say I had a pretty successful business career. However, I always had my heart back in athletics and we're working with, uh, you know, kids coaching them. And especially my two boys I had opportunities to coach both of them not at the high school level, but at the lower school levels. Um, but I also knew at some point my heart wanted to take me back to education and working with kids. And I'd said to my wife, once our two boys have graduated from college, so I left when they were born, they're getting ready to graduate. Uh, we were fortunate enough that both of them were able to go to Villanova University and they both graduated. And a lot of people knew that I had said when I turned 50, I was ready to go back and I wanted to coach and teach and get back involved. And of course, a lot of people told me I was out of my mind. Um, you don't want to get back into the education world. However, to me, God works in unbelievable ways. And this was an opportunity that got presented. I um, was watching my older son play in a state basketball tournament. And a good friend of mine, Jerry Cabasa from Sussex Tech, a school downstate, was scouting the game. And I saw him. I, now, I hadn't seen him for over 20 years. And he just said to me, what are you doing? And I explained to him, you know, why I was there. And he said to me, well, if you ever if you ever decide to get back into this, please call me, come in and see me. Well, we had had an opportunity. We had just built a home down the beach, a second home at the beach, which was only 15 minutes from his school. And uh, I went over and visited him and started talking with him. And I came home with tapes and and, and all my swag and my wife said, oh, my God, you get you, you got the bug already. And I said, yeah, it's a beautiful school. He's a great guy. We have been good friends for a long time. And at the same time, my company was going through a buyout and we were going through some reorganization and they wanted me to move to Maine. And I basically told the president of the company, I, I can't move to Maine. And he wanted me eventually to take over the company. Um, and I just couldn't do it for family reasons. And I just felt at that time it was going to be too tough. And. Again, I was fortunate in that I was able to get a buyout for my contract. And for two years, I had a buyout on my contract. And that gave me two years to decide what I wanted to do again. And this other opportunity came up. And again, I God's had his hand on me my whole life. Every time I either fall down or need a change, I just put it in his hands. And he leads me the right way. And um, lo and behold, I got offered a job to go to Sussex Tech. And I taught there for a year, social studies. My friend was offered a college job at Wesley College to be the basketball coach. And he said, well, you're coming with me, right? And I said, I can't go up there and be an assistant coach. Um, so the superintendent asked me if I'd be interested in staying on as the athletic director and the head basketball coach. So that's how I got back into this. So I've gone full circle. It's interesting that this year is the year where I'm approaching that I will have been in education the same number of years as I was in the business world. So I've done them both and I had an opportunity to return to it. And quite honestly, Jake, I didn't have any idea what I was getting into as an athletic director. I kind of had an idea, but my business background and running an organization and working with people and motivating people was a perfect fit, I felt. And I was able to take that background and my superintendent saw that as well. And it was a great opportunity that I will always be grateful for. And that, so that's how I got into the world of athletic, about being an athletic director.
and I've enjoyed it ever since. Oh, obviously, uh, you know, you, there's no better job. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's I, I think probably if there is a normal path, you know, you teach for a while and you're coaching, you know, you coach for a few years, you have some success and then um, you either decide or someone approaches you and you move from coaching into becoming an AD. But there's not that um, there's let's say there's not always you know, that uh, experiential plan, as you alluded to, organization, dealing with people, et cetera, et cetera, that's so critical for an athletic director that uh, the head coach doesn't always get. So yeah. even though you're out of education, you were building that skill set. Um, and as my boss used to like to say, you spoke the language of athletics. And so coming right. back in, you could put those skills to work. Very that's good stuff. Equipment. That's yeah. a good way of putting it, Jake. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, that's cool. Uh, once again, for our listeners, our guest today is Joe Thompson, certified master athletic administrator, and currently the assistant AD at Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. We're going to take another quick break, but please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank our good friends at Vital Signs Wall of Fame. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school's uh, record boards for your sports, for all the events, and also uh, put your Hall of Fame on display in a digital way, get in touch with our friends at VitalSignsWallOfFame.com. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an entire library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let VitalSignsWallOfFame.com help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments. That's VitalSignsWallOfFame.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Joe, we always like to give our guests the opportunity to acknowledge the mentors that they've had in their life. You know, you, you know, mentioned a few already, which is great. But as you know, none of us get to where we're at on our own. Uh, the expression that I like to use is I still hear those voices in my head. So uh, do you have any voices that you still hear? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Um, like I said, I, I would say uh, my number one mentor would be my father. Uh, my father was a was a great hardworking man that uh, was a very good coach. He's a very good father. Um, and he taught me good, good, solid work values. Um, but he, I, he also taught me um, through watching him coach and playing for him how to care for people. Uh, so he would, you know, as, as they say, and one of the things I always talk to the coaches and ADs about when I work with them is who's who's your Mount Rushmore people. Uh, my dad would certainly be there. My college coach, Jack Sabota, would be there as well. Uh, he's a tremendous man that really cared about us, cared about us more than as players, actually, on a college level. Uh, then as I continued through my business careers, I mean, I've had the opportunity to work for some really good people in the business world that were very good as far as uh, teaching me good, solid managerial skills and values. And there, there's many, many to name there. So probably would be too many, I think, at this point. Uh, to name in that world. But when it got to the world of where I got back into athletics, as I mentioned, Tom Rosa, who was um, my first athletic director as a coach and who I eventually became a colleague with as an athletic director, is another tremendous man that taught me a lot. Uh, we had people, uh, Jack Holloway, who is a long established athletic director in the state of Delaware, who's recognized by everyone in Delaware as a tremendous uh, mentor for athletic directors, had a huge hand in my development. Uh, Kevin Charles, who was the director of DIAA, um, which is the group that oversees us, uh, was another man that I learned a lot of good things from, uh, learning how to change from business into the education world. Uh, I mentioned Pat Savini, my superintendent, uh, who was another good man, um, who really also came from a business world, was a superintendent. And, and I mentioned my friend, Jerry Cabasa, who's a good friend of mine. He's almost just as close to me as a brother. Um, these were all guys that when I got back into the education world, really helped me learn, as you said, the lingo, learn how to speak athletics versus the business side. And it took me a while to make that adjustment. Um, you know, in the business side, you can make decisions a little quicker and you can react quicker when you have to. And sometimes you got to make tough decisions. Whereas in the education world, 
um, you, you've got to, you know, work within the system and how things are done, which are a little bit different. Um, and they all helped me through that. So I am really appreciative of everything those guys have done. And because of that, I'm trying to pass that on to the younger people now, you know, believe it or not, I have to consider myself as one of the older guys now. And, but I don't mind that, you know, because I've been fortunate and now it's time to pass it on to others. Yeah. That's uh, an important part of mentoring that often doesn't get mentioned enough is that, you know, as we all were mentored um, in by our family, by our parents, as you mentioned, uh, you know, throughout our school years and our early careers. Now be, there's a point where you're turning that around and mentoring that next generation. And hopefully, you know, our, our podcast helps in just a little bit, uh, a little way of, you know, sharing those best practices, sharing those tips, you know, for younger AD. So it, it might not be a face-to-face -face personal mentoring experience, but the things that you're sharing uh, with our listeners today are going to help some younger AD that's listening. Very cool stuff. I hope so. <laughs> uh, once again, for our listeners, our guest today is Joe Thompson. He's a certified master athletic administrator. Uh, regular listeners will recognize we're going to take another break, uh, but we will be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to our good friends at Snap Raise. Go to snapraise.com and check out how their fundraising platform can help your program. Our coaches use Snap Raise, and it was just fantastic. As an athletic director, there were no headaches for me. I knew what was going on, but I didn't have to be involved. At snapraise.com, there's no upfront cost. There's no selling. There's no inventory. Um, and the best part about it, it works. Okay? Choosing the best fundraiser for you and your school is critical, and you can put the Snapraise digital difference to work for your program. As I said, it's easy, it's safe, and it works. Go to snapraise.com and check out the thousands and thousands of dollars that they have helped schools just like yours raise using SnapRaise. Okay? Go to snapraise.com and change your fundraising game plan. Start a fundraiser that works for you. That's snapraise.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Joe, you and I have been doing this for a long time. Uh, we're both CMAAs. You know, you're still, you know, very active with your state association. Um, but we get a lot of younger athletic directors. And I think it's important for them to understand and hear about the journey that we all take. So share a little bit about your journey. How'd you first hear about your state association? How'd you get involved? And of course, how'd you get involved with NIAAA? Sure. Yeah. It, as everyone knows, Delaware is a small state. Um, we do a lot of things very closely together. We we um, are unique in that we are a, a state that is run by DIAA, but DIAA falls under the auspice of the Department of Education. And our Athletic Directors Association is a separate organization known as DAD, but we work very closely together. Um, the way I got involved with it and really started understanding NIAAA was that we would actually be invited to a training session once a year that the state organization, DIA, would put on. And I'm a big believer in training. One of the things I did in the business world was I was in charge. I was in charge of sales and marketing. But as we all know, salespeople need to have very good training before we uh, set them loose. And um, I also did our corporate training, and I did it on a national level as well as a local level. So training to me has always been a cornerstone. Um, and once I started taking the uh, LTI classes, I really enjoyed them and I saw the value of them and really saw the need for it as an athletic director. Um, after I had taken a couple, I knew and I always pride myself on professional development that I started working towards my CAA and my CMAA because I felt it was important to me. I always be want to be as qualified as I can be and as professional as I can be. So I worked on my CMAA. Um, during that time, our state association was not really operating real well, our AD association. Um, and at one point, actually, the, the, the slogan started coming up that dad was dead. Uh, and that was mentioned to me by um, a gentleman I had mentioned earlier, Kevin Charles, who came to me and he and I started talking about what we could do to revive our state athletic directors association. Because Kevin, as the executive director, knew that the better we trained our ADs and the closer we worked together, the easier things would be. 
So Kevin and I put together a vision for how we could start to train our state ADs. And it worked out great. It never would have happened without his help and assistance. Um, and then we set up our training programs. And that's when I started becoming uh, tied into NIAAA. Every year in September, I would go out to Indianapolis and I would get blown away by all the people I would meet there, as you know. I mean, you talk about a humbling experience. Is, uh, we all think we do well and we're kind of the top dog maybe in our state doing training, but you get out there and it's uh, it's humbling. I mean, I met people out there that are just tremendous, tremendous people. And they, again, I don't, I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, there's nobody out there I wouldn't put in it, you know, but um, these were guys that mentored me. And, you know, here I'm supposed to be mentoring. And, um, of course, I got to mention Phil because, as we know now, Phil's in charge of the organization. But he was a tremendous help to me when I first started out, and Daryl Nance especially. Um, so we started putting together our training program with a vision of the fact that we wanted to offer every one of our, our ADs an opportunity to get CAA certified, possibly CMA certified, but definitely CAA certified. And we put together a two-year track where we trained all of our new ADs with a new AD program in the summer when they started. Then they took 501, 502, 503 their first year, 504, 506 the second year, which I can take no credit for our legal courses. We were able to, we always kid about it, but I stole Ron Belenko from Maryland when Ron moved and retired to Delaware. And as soon as he crossed the state line, I was in touch with him, but we had worked together before because uh, I trained down in Maryland as well. But we put together a great program now for our state AD so that working with our people and working in conjunction with the state association we now offer a program where any new AD can come in and get all their coursework done and we get them ready to test within a two-year period um, it's been very successful um, at one point over 65 percent of our ADs in the state were certified um, we're running into a little bit of a lull now, just like we hear nationally that the turnover is really starting to go out of the roof. And it seems like we're doing a lot more training than we are, um, you know, new ADs than getting training done for our current ADs because it, it, they're starting to turn around a lot quicker. Um, but I've, I've always kept an interest in that. I've always done it again. To me, that's the way of giving back. I enjoy doing public speaking. I enjoy doing workshops. I enjoyed the people that I met at NIAAA, and now we're trying to push that down to our state level. And I, I'm really proud of the group that we've put together that offer that training program. So that's kind of, I got involved with it. Um, and again, like I said, with the help of Kevin Charles, we really do have a unique program in Delaware that I think is pretty impressive. No, I've heard about that program uh, a number of times, and I think it's the envy of a lot of states, you know, the way that you guys provide that program in two years and and the success that you've seen. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll do this again at the end of the uh, podcast, but if one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain a little bit more, what's the best way that they can get a hold of you? Um, they, can, they can reach me. Um, I have a nonprofit where actually I work with schools and ADs and coaches on character development would be the best way to do it. And that's Jay Thompson without the P T H O M S O N at ETA 356.com. Um, or they could give me a call. Uh, if they go to my website, that's got my cell phone number and it's got my personal number, you know, my office number here. Um, if they want to call my office here, it's 302-576-2936. And I'd be more than happy to, you know, help anyone any way I can. I uh, appreciate you sharing that. And for our NIAAA members, uh, that information is also on the NIAAA portal. So uh, we're going to take another quick break, uh, but we'll be back with more from Joe Thompson, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Gipper for their support of the podcast. Go to gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating world-class content for their school's social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. It's so easy, even I can do it. Once again, go to Gipper.com, mention that you heard about it on the podcast, and use this code ADPOD10, that's ADPOD10, and get 10% off. That's Gipper.com. Start creating custom-branded content for your school's social media channels. Gipper.com.
We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to Huddle.com and see how Huddle can help your school and your program. Huddle is how the world sees sports. Over 200,000 teams, over 40 different sports use Huddle and their analytics to help their teams play better. Huddle is a complete pl performance platform. They've got online tools. They've got apps. They have smart cameras. Of course, they've got analytics, but there's so much more. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years. And as an athletic director, we were a Huddle school. And our coaches just loved the uh, smart cameras. Uh, they, they loved the programmability of it. Um, of course, they love the analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle believes in sports and teams believe in Huddle. With over 6 million users, including the college coaches that you're trying to get to recruit your kids. You want to find out more about what Huddle can do for you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school? Go to Huddle.com and talk to their experts. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Um, Joe, one of the things we try to do with this podcast, as we mentioned, is the idea of sharing best practices. So I'm going to put you on the spot. What are some things that uh, you all do there at Friends or maybe things you've seen at other schools that you would consider best practices? We, um, a, again, I think a lot of it is in line with what we do on a state level with training ADs. We do a, a lot here. We pride ourselves on our coaches development program. Our coaches know that I have a series of workshops that they can go to, where they can use. I also have them online on my website where we talk to our coaches um, about uh, another group that I work with, the three-dimensional group of the development of the total athlete. And that's the development of the body, the mind, and the heart. Uh, we also do that with our coaches to explain to them that we feel that that's one of their key things that they need to do each week. So we spend a lot of time with our coaches talking in that light, uh, which is a unique program. Uh, numbers say that only 15% of coaches in the country coach at all three dimensions on a regular basis. Uh, and I I'd like to say that's something unique we have here. Um, another thing we have unique here is that we have a middle school program attached to the high school, and we do an awful lot of uh, relating back and forth with the two levels. We call them reaches. So uh, we really like to emphasize our varsity athletes reaching down to the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade programs and doing things jointly with them. Uh, another thing we've started up that we're, we're very proud of is we have a leaders council, which I know a lot of other schools use, and we finally have gotten around to it. Um, we had planned to do it three years ago, but obviously with COVID, it really kind of put, put a lot of that on the back burner. But uh, we have a leaders council where I bring together the leaders each of each sport in the season, and we talk about things that we want them to learn to be leaders that they take with them when they leave here. Um, so our Leaders Council is another, uh, I think, unique thing that, uh, like I said, I've borrowed that from other people as well. Uh, the last thing I li really like to say about the, the unique thing about our community is it's a Quaker school with Quaker values. And we, we have basic values that we want all of our athletes and uh, students to understand and follow. And it's a very caring community where our programs care about each other, our athletes care about each other. And... It's just a great place to be. When people come to visit here, they will say that the first thing they notice is how much the teachers care about the students and the students care about the teachers. And it's just a very, uh, it's a strong environment for a student to come and attend. Um, we're not a big school. Uh, you know, we, we have a high school of 260 students, but yet with that number of, of students, we're able to compete at a, at a state level and compete for state championships. So again, it's the type of student that we have who's a very strong academic student, but also an athlete. So it embodies a lot of these things we talk about so that when I came here, I was able to give a lot of the things back that I'd been incorporating into some other schools. You know, I was at a public Botex school and yet the tools I use there, I can still use here with a whole different, um, you know, community type aspect. Um, 
and we've got an administration that really promotes it as well. So um, it, it's just a, it's a great place to work. And we have an experienced group of coaches that care about their kids. And it, it, it's an enjoyable to do that. It's a whole new challenge for some of them, you know, as you know, and I know <clears throat> you coach after a while, you do tend to get stale and you do need new approaches or you need, you know, we start to burn out. And one of the things I like to do is hopefully give coaches some new energy and a new way to look at some things to get them reinvigorated, so to speak. So I think those are some of the key things that we do here at the school. Oh, and all those things that you talked about, um, that's the culture of mm -hmm. a school. And you hear coaches and ADs talk about, you know, changing the culture, building the culture. You know, it, it, there's so many different facets that go into it. But, you know, leadership within the department, administrative support, uh, and having those coaches buy in, you know, just very, very critical. Thanks so much for sharing that. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Once again, for our listeners, our guest today is Joe Thompson. He's a certified master athletic administrator, and he's the assistant director of athletics at Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. We're going to take another break. We'll be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Final Forms. Final Forms is the industry leader in registration and forms, but there's so much more than that. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. They've got reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that go with having an athlete in the house. Final Forms can also help your coaches with things like communication and attendance and even help with their own certification management. And for athletic directors, Final Forms can help with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this with secure language translation. Your information is secure with Final Forms. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Uh, Joe and I, I were talking during the break a little bit. We're both of a similar era. And, uh, you know, I like to say that um, 100 years ago when I was in high school, uh, our, my coaches would say things like, yeah, come on, Jake, you got to be tough. Or come on, Jake, you got to suck it up. And we pretty much knew what they meant, and we did it. Uh, today, uh, we have much better ways of communicating with our student-athletes but I still think that toughness is an important component of sports and of life. So here's my question, Joe, how can we help kids develop toughness while also being aware of the very real challenges that a kid today is going through that, that I never had to go through back in the seventies. Uh, do you have any advice for us? Uh, yeah. I, um, and I actually do a, 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 a workshop that I offer to our ADs and coaches across the state. And it's called how to motivate the 21st century athlete. And I was really fortunate as I was doing my own personal development to come in contact with a man named Rod Olson, who wrote legacy builder and also uh, the uh, lunchtime warrior uh, series. Um, Rod and another young man named Randy Chambers with fellowship of Christian athletes uh, really got my attention when they talked to me again, back to this three dimensional concept. And I, I can remember very distinctly uh, when I would talk with Rod, he would say, you know, everybody talks about how kids are different. Kids are different. Kids are different. The bottom line is kids still want to perform and they want to succeed. But what really has probably changed over the years is the way to motivate them. And, and I think the key to motivation nowadays is different than back when we were playing ball. Um, you know, society, as we all know, has changed. I mean, if you look at all the choices that a, uh, an athlete now has, I mean, not just athletically, but between the Internet and television and, you know, social media and all the different things that pull them in 100 different directions. An athlete, I think, is still looking for that reason to be motivated. Um, they've got to find what their hot button is. And. One of the things that uh, we talk about in the workshop is when you take a look at the current athlete, I like to show them a slide that shows them basic things. Like, let's think about 
back when we were young and watching TV, we always laugh, right? We only had three channels, maybe four channels on our TV, right? I mean, you look at cable TV now and look at all the choices, right? You look at the internet, which we didn't have, and all the different ways you can spend time. These are a million different choices an athlete can have. Um, it's not an indictment about um, marriage, but the fact that even you, even if you look across the country now, our divorce rate that is almost at 50% is, um, it's tough for kids, right? So back in the day when we were competing where if a student needed to be motivated, he went home and there was usually something stable at home and a united front that would help support a coach. You still have that, but you have a lot more players involved in that support now, right? You could, in essence, be dealing with four parents, not two. Okay, and we know some of the dynamics that's going on with that right now. We also know that a player is getting pulled in a million different directions versus the age of specialization where you've got coaches just wanting them playing one sport. The key to all of it, and the best thing I learned from Rob was that 90% of motivating today's athletes lies in relationships. We have to build relationships with our athletes. If we do that, kids will still run through walls for us. And I firmly believe that. And the way you build the relationship is by building trust, by being consistent, and communicating with them. You know, the old school coach style does not work i mean look at it look at all the coaches that have gotten fired that were very successful but they didn't know how to talk to people and they're not coaching anymore and i think if we do those things if we if we build that trust and we build that consistency and they and they and they become comfortable with us and know they can count on us i think then you can motivate an athlete and that's back to what we talked about with three-dimensional coaching we're talking about getting to the heart of the kid the heart of the athlete you know and and, and it takes more time. It's not as easy. I think that's why coaches get frustrated at times. But I think if we do that, I think it makes a huge difference in everybody that impacts that athlete. And as we talked about earlier, you know, and I know the coaches that got our hearts and it motivated us to do the same for others. And uh, yeah, I, I still think, by the way, that there is a need for a little bit of old school coach in all of us. I do think there's times when we got to set limits and we got to set boundaries and expectations. But I would say probably the difference is how we deliver that message now. It's got to be delivered a different way. And if not, there's so many options for the kids that they're going to move. They're going to change. They're going to transfer. Look at the number of transfers. I mean, look at the NCAA with the portal right now. What What are we learning about loyalty anymore? And those are the things that I think are really impacting us and making it tougher for coaches now to motivate kids. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, last point about the options. And even just looking at the high school level, you know, when you and I were in high school, um, you know, there were probably, you know, six or seven sports at the very most throughout the entire year that you could choose from. Um, I mean, they didn't even start soccer at my school until I was, you know, out of college, uh, back in my high school. And so it was either basketball or wrestling. And, and so the, the choices that kids had to be a part of something, uh, were far less back then. And they, I think they felt the need to be involved in sports much greater nowadays. And it's a good thing. There's so many more sports. There's so many more things that a school can offer that a kid doesn't have to be a part of a, a sports team to feel good about themselves. They can feel good about themselves doing a ton of other things. And that's a good thing. But from a coaching standpoint, you're absolutely right. You got to build those relationships. You really have to kind of explain, Hey, this is why we're going to work hard. Uh, it, and it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be rewarding, but you know, back in the day, you didn't have to explain it. Now you do. And and I, there's nothing wrong with that. But, no. Uh, no. Building those relationships is key. And it takes time. I mean, I think um, you, you've got to build that into a practice now, which we didn't have to do that back before because values were expected to be taught at home. Okay. And a coach was told the to coach and it was, that's what it is now. But I believe now we all have much more responsibility to teach values and, and life lessons to our athletes because they're looking for it in a lot of ways. And if we don't do that with them, as uh, another one of my mentors said to me, somebody's going to fill their head with something. It's a matter of what it's going to get filled with. 
And we have to be proactive and we have to give them those lessons that they can take with them because it, it's going to happen one way or another. Oh, no, you're absolutely right. Great, great stuff. Uh, for our listeners, our guest is Joe Thompson. He's a certified master athletic administrator. We're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. If you go to hometownticketing.com, they will show you how to sell your tickets online, how to scan the people that come to your games, also how to collect your revenue. That's important. And every step of the way, you're going to have a dedicated client success manager that's providing hands-on support just for you. Go to hometownticketing.com. They'll show you how to sell tickets to things like school dances and theater performances, music concerts, uh, just about anything, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and start selling your tickets digitally. That's hometownticketing.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Joe Thompson from the Wilmington Friends School in Delaware. Joe, you and I were talking during the break, and you mentioned that you had a topic that you know was close to your heart you'd like to share with our listeners. So uh, let's do that. Sure. Um, and we've talked about this on the state level as well as the national level, but the rate and turnover rate right now for athletic directors is becoming higher and higher. Uh, I think an athletic director is dealing with a lot more pressures, a lot more topics, and a lot more issues than they ever had to in the past. Um you know, and we continue to see them popping up now this year, you know, the new topic's going to be the NIL, you know, and they're going to have to learn how to deal with that. Um, you know, we've got the issues of, of transgender uh, policies, which we've got to eventually be able to address. Um, you've got issues of uh, a higher coaching turnover, which we never really had in the past. And all these things are just layering on top of what an ED needs to do. And, you know, I've talked to many, many ADs that now are saying, well, this isn't the gig that I signed up for. And this isn't really what I thought I'd be doing with my time. And it makes it tough and it weighs heavy on my heart because there's so many good people that I think are getting burnt out quicker than normally in the past they would have. Um, I think it gets down to a lot of it is remembering our why. And again, that's another thing I've learned um, as I mentor others and people have mentored me is that. I think at times we need to step aside and remember and ask ourselves why we're doing what we do, because it gets very easy to lose sight of that. Um, you know, I know when I mentor our new new ADs and I tell them that first year, as we all know, when they feel like they're just barely keeping their head above water, they need to just stop and go outside and watch teams practice or go watch a game or at lunchtime, go sit and talk with some athletes and remember why they're into this and the reasons they're doing it. Um, I was taught that when you forget your why, that's also the, the sign where you're starting to lose your passion and purpose with what you're doing. And you've got to remind yourself of that. I, I do an exercise with the new ADs where I ask them to write their why on an index card and keep it in their back pocket. We do the same thing here with our coaches. You know, so when a coach comes in and he's frustrated and tired and just, dealing with all these issues we've talked about during this podcast, the first thing I say is, do you have your why, you know, pull it out of your pocket and let's read it and talk about it. And kind of just to keep grounded in what we do. Um, you know, as well as I do, Jake, that ADs are not getting the compliments and not getting the pats on the back that maybe they did in the past. I don't know if they have the respect they had in the past. Um, but again, we've got to remember why we're doing it. Um, you know, again, back to my father who taught me, Joe, if you can make a difference in one kid's life in a year, you're making a difference. You know, and it, it, you can't go out and catch it. It's like duck hunting, right? You can't go out and knock all the ducks out of the sky at once. But if you can get one at a time, you're going to make a difference. And that ripple effect we talk about. And I, I really think that's something that we've got to, at least from a basic viewpoint, get back to. If we don't, there's too many reasons why people do want to get out of this profession right now. And uh, just like we talked about with reaching a uh, athlete's heart and building relationships, I think at times our ADs are looking for that relationship, whether it be with an administrator or a school community or coaches or whatever it may be. 
And it's like, we're all in such a hurry that we're kind of forgetting what we're all in this for. And I think we need to start getting back to some, you know, basic elementary things. And it's maybe something as simple as that. Like, why do you do what you do? I, I know as I mentor the ADs in the state, I had a conversation with at least three or four ADs through the course of a year where they'll call me up and just say, you know, it's too much. Um, I'm getting level, layer, uh, layered on with too many things. I've got to teach classes now. Um, I've got to handle policies. Our state policies are getting more and more complicated. Um, and ADs are asked to administer all this. And if you think of all that, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do it. But if you get back to the root of why we all got into it to begin with, I think it could make a difference. And I, I just think that's a tough thing to do. And and I, I feel I, I, I'm fortunate that I'm on this side of my career with it. Um, it's tough for a young AD now, I think, you know, and I think as much as we can do to help them through it, the better. And as guys retire, hopefully we can get more and more people to give back because I think uh, young ADs could use that. No, you're absolutely right. And it, it brings up an important uh, piece um, of our profession and that's the networking um you know every ad whether it's you know somebody like you and i that have done it for a couple of years uh or that brand new ad we all face those challenges of scheduling and budgets and finding coaches and and working with kids and uh, you know meeting with parents you know uh creating that network so you can call somebody or email somebody and say hey you know this just fell in my lap you know how would you handle it is just so, so important. So appreciate you pointing that out. Uh, you know, the why as well as, okay, you know, what are you going to do now? Uh, this has been really cool, Joe. I can't believe our paths haven't crossed before this, but uh, appreciate you sharing time. But we're not done yet. Uh, we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. You know, you're certainly an experienced AD. But when we come back from our break, uh, we're going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job. Uh, we're going to hear from our sponsor, uh, Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack, who sponsor the AD Toolbox section. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Joe Thompson is going to put in his new athletic director toolbox. So please stay with us. We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director Toolbox segment. Athletic surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. We use surveys for just about everything at my schools, uh, for coaches, for teachers, for kids, even for parents. And the information that would come back on our surveys was almost always over the top positive. But the surveys also allowed that squeaky wheel parent to vent a little bit. And sometimes they'd share a small issue that you could end up addressing and keep it from turning into a big issue because you didn't know about it because you didn't do a survey. If you've never done a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting with Joe Thompson. He's a certified master athletic administrator, and he's the assistant AD at the Wilmington Friends School in Wilmington, Delaware. Joe, uh, you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but right now I want you to send out a brand new AD, but I'm only going to let you put three items in their toolbox. What three items are you going to put in their new AD toolbox? <laughs> Well, this is a great topic to talk about um, because we do a two-day new AD training session in August. And in that, we actually give them a toolbox and we give them 10 items. The very interesting thing about these 10 items is that when we gave them the 10 items and we show it to them on a slide, I had the opportunity last year uh, in Indianapolis when we all get together, the um, training coordinators, and you gave me your toolbox book. And what was interesting is your top five, actually, of our top 10, eight of ours were in your top 10 of your toolbox. And this was outside of me ever having seen your book. So we were we actually gave the book to our new AD saying, look, forget it's us in Delaware. This is what the best of the best across the country are saying. 
And now we line them up with ours and we're teaching you the same things that my friend Jake down in Florida put in a book after talking with ADs and this is what it is. So your toolbox was a great tool to give them. I mean, if nothing else, you could do that. Um, as far as the top ones, um, again, we really align closely. Um, the biggest thing that we hit on with a new AD is that they are not going to know what's going on for the first two or three years. And we tell them, you have to have a mentor and you can't do this alone. You have to not be afraid to call people. And we have a group of three of us, Bill Schultz, myself, and Mike Hart, that our new ADs know at any time they can call any of us and we're going to help them. That's part of the reason why I decided to be an assistant AD now and not the AD. Actually, Jeff Ransom, my AD here, was in one of my training classes and then offered me an opportunity to come work with him here, which says a lot about a guy, right? Um, you know, he sets his ego aside and says, hey, I want you to come here and help me because it afforded me the opportunity to do my training for the rest of the people in the state. OK, so they're not going to know everything. And we have to break that down and say to them, do not be afraid to call. You must have a mentor. And we spend a lot of time talking about how to choose that mentor. The other thing they have to know is they have to know all the rules and regs for their state and for their conference. OK, and the third thing is they need to work on a professional development and be serious about their profession. And they've got to know what NIAAA is all about. And they've got to get involved in LTI. And if they take the courses and we offer them, they have the opportunity. They can take webinars for free. We pay for them, any webinar. We offer them the classes here. Um, and we also offer to them if they want to go to Maryland or Pennsylvania, they can go there to take classes. So I would say of everything, there's a million things, but if you've got a good mentor and you're not afraid to ask questions, whether you're screwing up or just validating that you're doing something right, if you understand the basics of where to find your rules and regs, and then again, call the mentor to help explain it. And the third thing is tapping into NIAAA. I, I think they're the three most important things you got to get out of the gate. And interestingly enough, I know they're three of your top five as well. So <laughs> I, I don't think that happens by accident, right? I mean, this is, this isn't me talking. This is, Again, back to these guys that I tell you, when I get in Indianapolis, I get humbled by, they all say the same thing. So I know we're, I know we're doing the right thing with our training program. And then we make it an effort that first year to pretty much regularly call our new ADs on a regular basis. And I'm going to do something new this year. We're actually going to do a, a, a cup of Java with Joe on uh, Tuesday mornings where I'm just going to have a Zoom and say, hey, I'm here. If you want to call in and ask questions or whatever, just let me know and I'll bring some people in and, you know, at least they know they have someone they can call there if they have questions. So I think that's key that first year. So now I, again, thanks so much for that uh, very kind shout out. Uh, thanks for sharing the tools and they are great tools. Uh, that's why we call them best practices. You know, the best mm -hmm. uh, are using them and great idea with your uh, monthly zoom. I just record that and upload it and you've got the Delaware AD podcast right there. Okay. Right. It's another right. resource, another tool in the toolbox. Yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> Joe, again, this has been really cool. Uh, and I, again, I appreciate the shout out. If one of our listeners wants to reach out and pick your brain and it sounds like they really should, what's the best way that they'd get a hold of you? Uh, they could email me at J Thompson, T H O M S O N at, ETA356.com. The ETA, by the way, isn't for uh, expected uh, uh, time of arrival, even though some people think it's for excellence through athletics. So it's ETA356.com. I also have a website, or they can feel free to call me. All my information's there on the website as well, um, or they can call me here in my office at 302 576 2936, and I'd be more than happy to help out in any way I can. I love that. Excellence through athletics. Yep. Joe Thompson, Certified Master Athletic Administrator. Thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate having, having me on and thank you for all you do for us as well. Oh, gosh. Right back at you. For listeners, uh, remember the Zoom recordings of every interview get uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.